This summer on June 4th, 2023, Liam Byrne was arrested in Mallorca by the UK's National Crime Agency. It took the combined forces of the Spanish National Police, the Irish Garda Shahana and an extradition warrant from the NCA to bring this Liam Byrne to justice. Closely tied with the Kinahan cartel, Freddie Thompson and even loosely related to Martin Cahill, a.k.a. The General, Liam Byrne is an Irish crime lord you do not want to cross. He is as ruthless as he is cunning, and his story begins in 1980. James and Sadie Byrne wanted more children for their family house in Crumlin. They already had four children, but they wanted six. After a nine-month pregnancy, Liam was born in 1980, on October 30th. Sadie was a regular housewife, but James, he had a secret. Even though he didn't have a job, James bought a house in Crumlin, Dublin. Known to his friends as Jaws, this Irish criminal was so popular in the underworld that he even became a close associate of Martin Cahill, aka The General. James prepared both Liam and David for a career in crime. The two boys knew everything about crime from a very early age. In his teenage years, Liam started filling up his police file. Crumlin is very close to St. Teresa's Gardens. This meant he was close to Christy Kinahan Sr., Kinahan was already established in the drug trade among Dubliners. Through his father's connections and his eagerness to join the trade, Liam Byrne, at the age of 16 in 1996, began selling cannabis on the streets of Crumlin. And he eventually moved to selling ecstasy. Kinahan was the supplier and Byrne was the seller. Eventually, he became so good that he joined Kinahan and his cousin Freddie Thompson. Together, they grew the drug trade in Dublin. But just one year later, Christy Kinahan was placed in jail. The police found him guilty of smashing that like button, just like you should if you haven't done so already. But no, in all seriousness, they found him guilty of stealing a couple of checks, and that was reason enough to imprison him. Freddie Thompson and Liam Byrne were not at the helm. They were leaders of the gang. One year into their leadership in 1998, Byrne got involved in an armed robbery. He was only 18 at the time and he decided to steal money from two shops in Dublin. He planned the robbery along with his friend Liam Greenhall, who was 16 and underage. The first armed robbery was successful, but the second one in July 1998 wasn't. Just as they were about to walk out with the stolen cash from the register, an off-duty guarder walked into the small inner-city shop. Liam pleaded guilty to the firearms charges and burglary, and because it was his first time, the judge gave him a suspended sentence. If he committed another crime in his life, he would go to jail for four years. Liam walked out of the courtroom a free man, but that didn't last long. Just three months later, on April 23, 2000, Byrne was involved in another assault. This time it was a football player from the League of Ireland, Trevor Donnelly and his girlfriend Jennifer Doyle were at the Crumlin Shopping Centre. They were ordering food at a kebab shop when Donnelly, Doyle, got verbally attacked by three women standing in line behind them. But before Donnelly could escape, Byrne arrived in his car. He took out a baseball bat and beat Donnelly senseless. Jennifer begged him to stop and Byrne listened, but before walking away he said, "'Tell him if he wakes up, it's bullets.'" He got in the car, put the baseball bat in the trunk of his car and drove off. Even though 50 people saw the assault and many of them recognised Byrne, none of them were willing to testify against him in court. The only person who was brave enough to press charges was Donnelly's girlfriend, Jennifer Doyle. Byrne knew this assault would send him to jail, so he tried to bribe Jennifer with €50,000. The lady refused, even though she hadn't a dime to her name. She took Liam Byrne to court, despite his numerous intimidation attempts. Many people advised her to take the money, but she didn't. After giving testimony against Byrne, she was intercepted in the hall of the Four Courts Bed and Breakfast where she was staying and was badly injured. But the die was cast. The testimony reached the police. Byrne's fate was sealed. The court reinstated the four-year sentence, added two for the assault, and the total jail time after remission came to four years and six months. After serving a full sentence, Byrne was finally free in November 2004 and was flung into an all-out drug war. You see, two months before Byrne went to prison, three of his gang members got into a lot of trouble. The police captured them, along with £750,000 worth of cocaine and £500,000 worth of ecstasy. 
it wouldn't have been a problem if they were all put in jail, but this wasn't the case. One of them, Declan Gavin, was released while the two others were charged at the scene. This made the two other members think Gavin ratted them out and the feds let him go. A war was brewing and violent attacks were common. Then, Christy Kinahan was released from prison in March of 2001. Everything seemed to calm down, but only for a moment. Wanting to be close to the cocaine wholesalers, Kinahan moved to Spain. Just weeks after his departure, an all-out war erupted. The Kremlin-Drimna feud took 13 lives and lasted 10 years. In this bloody climate, even Freddie Thompson didn't stay in Dublin. Oftentimes, he would go to Spain and help Kinahan with the operations in Spain. This left Byrne at the head of the Byrne Organised Crime Group. For the next 10 years, Byrne was responsible for distributing the drugs that Kinahan and Thompson sent from Spain. Eventually, their network grew so large that Byrne had to find some way to cover all the money they were bringing in. So, he started a luxury car dealership. LS Active Car Sales opened in 2013 in the Bluebell Industrial Estate. The point of this business was not to make money or sell cars. Sure, it did have luxury vehicles inside, but they hadn't sold a single one. Basically, the car dealership was like a rent-a-car service for the Byrne family. On one hand, it offered all family members luxury sports cars. On the other, they used the company to smash that subscribe button and ring the notification bell. But no, in all seriousness, they used the company to launder all of their drug money through it. But this was their downfall. They were sloppy. Instead of taking things slow, Byrne went in and bought a €270,000 house from one of his associates and then invested another €400,000 in renovations. The bank gave him a €150,000 mortgage, but it was still unclear where the remaining €120,000 came from. And this was just after he was released from prison, a time when Byrne claimed that he worked as a spray painter, earning €530 Euros per week. To make matters worse, his tax return claimed that he only earned €10,827 and paid €245 Euros in taxes, all while managing to cover a €697.22 monthly mortgage payment and paying another €850 Euros a month for a house he was renting. Eventually, the Criminal Assets Bureau, or CAB, seized the house located on Grangeview Road in Clonduckland. They even found a company registered in Byrne's name called the Mule State Foundation. After digging through the tax and income returns, the CAB found out that the €150,000 mortgage came from a bank account in Mauritius. It wasn't a mortgage, it was a loan. In 2020, Liam Byrne took back his house, sort of. People suspect that Byrne hired a jeep to crash into the house early in the morning of August 12, 2020. Then, the house was petrol-bombed and incinerated. Thankfully, the fire department responded rapidly, so no people or houses were damaged in the neighbourhood. A few months before that, the house was valued at €320,000 and was about to be sold by the CAB. Liam didn't agree with that. Bye for now.